Hello and welcome to the Spotlight. I'm Kaba Tahbaye. The U.S. Israeli genocidal war has passed the grim milestone of over 20,000 deaths. Yet the U.S. is postponing a U.N. session for a possible ceasefire over semantics. This is while the Israeli Prime Minister has threatened again that the genocidal war will not stop until Hamas is eliminated. Now in this edition of the Spotlight, we will look at where this war is heading, whether the U.S. is worried that Israel's loss will reflect negatively actually on its own power in the face of the resistance groups in West Asia, such as Hezbollah. First, let me introduce our guests. Paula Rudy, co-founder of the Free Palestine Movement, joins us from Berkeley. Also joining us is Eve Zangler, author and political activist from Montreal. Welcome to you both. Paula Rudy, I'll first start with you. We're looking at the third time that the U.S. has rejected this resolution. Uh, the last time I checked, uh, Thursday has started in New York. Uh, I don't know what time it is where you are, but I think it's where New York has to get together and for them to actually go through this. I I'm looking at how every minute counts when it comes to this genocidal war. At the same time, we're looking at semantics here. I think it's over cessation uh, that is the problem for the U.S. They are opting for suspension. Uh, do you think, how do you view and assess the way that the U.S is uh, positioning itself here when it comes to uh, the UN, which could result maybe in a, a possible ceasefire, temporary one at that. Well, I'm not sure it's just about uh, the semantics. It's also, I think, uh, from what I've heard about the uh, question of distribution and who supervises it and who controls it. And <clears throat> um, it, the, uh, uh, the, the ones who proposed this, the, the UAE and the other nations that are involved in drafting it, uh, want the United Nations to be uh, responsible for this. And um, I suspect that Israel wants more control over where the aid goes, and specifically they don't want it to, uh, to go to northern Gaza. Uh, whereas, uh, whereas uh, the uh, drafters of the resolution and the Palestinians are saying, no, it must be open to all of Gaza. So that, that there may be more to it than we, than we know. We're not, we can't possibly be told everything about the negotiations that are happening behind, happening behind the scenes. Well, Yves Zangler, from uh, the statements that are coming from uh, Israel, um, it may uh, somewhat be confusing uh, because we have, for example, Isaac Herzog, who has said that uh, they are ready and prepared for another ceasefire. But at the same time, uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is that the war would not end while Hamas controls Gaza. And there's no uh, talk of reducing the intensity, at least not in the coming weeks. Uh, what is your view about, uh, first of all, this, uh, even the notion of a ceasefire, given that Israel, last time around, once it ended, killed so many Palestinians, and this time around, based on the way that uh, we're seeing that for, for, for it to have not happened already, but the way the Prime Minister Netanyahu is talking about it. Yeah, well, I would presume that Israel is, is uh, being preparing itself or preparing to try a similar type, quote unquote, uh, ceasefire or humanitarian pause or whatever we want to call what happened a few weeks ago. Um, and they're under a lot of pressure internally to um, get more of the hostages uh, back. Uh, and uh, they're also under pressure internationally to allow uh, humanitarian aid in and also to, uh, to slow down in the, in the killing. Uh, so that's what I think the Israelis you know, are sort of preparing for. And they're trying to, of course, get the best uh, deal they can make with you know, giving up, giving up as few Palestinians as they've uh, they've uh, kidnapped uh, in exchange for those uh, that uh, Hamas has in Gaza. Uh, but I think the broader issue here is is that, or what Netanyahu is speaking to, is that uh, the 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 murderous uh, uh, forces in in charge of Israel uh, want to be able to keep killing Palestinians. So whether whether that stops for a week and then you know continues for many months after, or uh, some or just continues on without stopping uh, for you know even a couple of days, 
Um, that's clearly what Netanyahu wants. Uh, it's all framed as, uh, you know, ending Hamas or, or destroying Hamas. Um, that may be, you know, I think they would probably like that in some sort of theoretical sense of obviously killing as many Hamas officials and getting as many high high officials of Hamas as possible. But really, this is this is about um, this is about destroying uh, Palestinian life in, in Gaza. And uh, and Hamas is is uh, just a sort of justification for this effort at uh, destroying Palestinian life in Gaza, hopefully from a Zionist perspective, ethnically cleansing Palestinians. And um, and they know, of course, that this level of killing that they're doing is, is just making Palestinians even more um, angry and uh, hateful towards Israel. And so the, mm -hmm. you know, even if they were to destroy Hamas, uh, there's going to be a much more uh, uh, hostile uh, resistance that's going to develop uh, over the over the coming years. Well, I mean, we're, we're looking at about 75 days of this uh, war to have transpired so far, Paul Rudy. If you were to take a look at the accomplishments on the Israeli side when it comes to the battlefield, I'm not too sure what they can show for it. Uh, one of the things that stands out, obviously, at the top of the list, which is not an accomplishment, is the fact that uh, 20,000 plus Palestinians have been murdered. So if, it, if the purpose is to defeat Hamas, it, this, this is going to take a long time. I mean, I'm no military analyst. But is that, I think Israel knows that that's not going to happen, but it's still selling that notion. Who are the buyers? Um, very few people, I think, buy the idea that they're fighting Hamas. They're fighting the pa Palestinian people, and they want to see the Palestinian people disappear, as Eve has alluded to. And uh, they are, uh, they want to see them disappear at least from the uh, land where they are. Uh, if they go to other countries, that's fine with uh, with the Israelis. But actually, I think the they would prefer to see them disappear from the face of the earth. This is genocide. This is ethnic cleansing. And I think that actually the, the death toll is far greater than what is uh, commonly um, broadcast. It's much more than uh, 20,000. There may be between five and 10,000 that are not counted because they don't have the names. Uh, Hamas, uh, the Hamas government in Gaza, the, the health ministry, is keeping names of all all them so that they can show that they are in fact uh, 20,000 of them. But there are so many for whom they don't have the names because they're buried underneath the, the rubble and they they were uh, children uh, were trapped underneath the rubble, maybe maybe staying alive for a while, but then then uh, um, dying in in terror and and pain, uh, and and we don't hear about those. But what about also the ones that are dying as a result of the sealing of of the borders and the lack of food and the lack of. Uh, medication and the disease that's happening because of uh, his Israel's acts. We don't even get statistics on, on people who are dying of uh, diseases and starvation that we, uh, uh, we, we don't see. So mm -hmm. the, the, the numbers are much greater than that. And, uh, and it'll, it will be, become much greater if they don't get food uh, and medical care. You know, Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor of the U.S., uh, visited uh, um, Israel uh, recently, Yves Zengler. I'm sure you're well aware of that. Uh, one of the things that uh, he uh, said uh, is the fact that uh, the Israel's, Israel needs to transition uh, from high intensity to low intensity, um, which uh, is uh, quite startling given the fact that uh, both entail uh, Israeli, I'm sorry, Palestinians to be killed and murdered. But another thing that he said based on an Israeli official uh, is that uh, Sullivan uh, said there was no pressure from Sullivan to end the fighting, but that he, he was concerned about the displacement of Palestinians and civilian casualties. So that does really show that the U.S. wants this war to continue. Uh, but why do you think the U.S. is so keen on that? Well, the, I mean, the U.S. is, uh, does, whether they say whatever they say, to some extent doesn't matter much, considering they continue to provide the weapons, uh, you know, new shipments of weapons on an almost sort of multi-day basis to, to Israel. So if they want to restrict uh, the killing, it's pretty simple to just stop 
either giving or selling weapons to Israel. So, um, yes, Israel, uh, U.S. is absolutely completely complicit in, in, in this uh, genocide. Um, now, what explains the U.S. Uh, uh, policy on this? I think that's a bit complicated in terms of, I mean, I think there's everything from the U.S. arms industry loves killing and <laughs> love wars. Uh, that just is its market. Uh, and this has been a market for their weapons. And, and so that from that standpoint, um, I think the U.S. Uh, obviously uh, sees Israel as a geostrategic uh, ally in the region that divides the region and you know, bombs Syria regularly and bombs other countries in the region. I, I also think there's a very powerful uh, 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 Israel lobby in within the U.S. There's a a uh, Christian Zionist element to it, and then there's a a well organized uh, a Jewish uh, uh, pro Israel uh, network. Uh, Joe Biden has long close connections uh, to the Israel lobby. Um, so I think that that's the um, the you know the explanation is is that this mix of arms industry geostrategic thinking and uh, and this powerful lobby uh, pushes the U.S. government to to basically support Israel uh, almost uh, almost no matter what. Uh, we need to figure out if you can help us, Paula Rudy, as to what it is that will uh, spell out an end game here. Now, what uh, the U.S. has said, uh, again, uh, out in the open, is uh, not what Israel wants. The U.S. wants what it calls a recalibrated, reformed uh, PA. I'm not too sure what a recalibrated or reformed PA would look like, but for that is what the option the U.S. seems to be leaning on, um, because that's what they're envisioning, where uh, the, Israel is saying, we want to handle the security. Um, what, what do you think it is that... Uh, either are going to, um, I guess, agree on, because they both seem to, well, both Israel obviously has a say, and uh, uh, U.S. is putting its two cents in there. Uh, and I'm saying that, uh, take, taking into account that Hamas cannot be defeated as we spoke earlier about that. So if you can put that into the equation for us and explain to us what's, what may happen. Yes, this is not about an agreement. If, if you're talking about how to end the uh, the fighting and the resistance, uh, it's not about an agreement between the United States and and Israel or between uh, Israel, the United States, and uh, the rest of the world. It's about uh, the Palestinians. The Palestinians must must have a uh, uh, their voice. They must be satisfied. They are not going to go back to a, uh, the, the situation as it was before. Hamas has clearly uh, declared that, and it seems to me that they are doing very, very well in pursuing their strategy. And they can probably hold out for a very, very long time. I'm not sure that Israel can hold out for a very long time. Their economy is, is, uh, is in the trash. And uh, a half million uh, Israelis have already left the country. Uh, a large percentage of their population is not living in the places where they used to live in the south and in the north. Uh, and they're very dissatisfied with what the government is doing. I don't think Israel can last that long. And, and Hamas is, is, uh, is counting on that. So it's about Hamas. And they will not go back to the situation where they are living in a um, uh, an open air concentration camp, and where uh, their government, their existing government, is taken away from them, and and some uh, um, uh, you know slave government is pl is is put in place to control them, so that the the Israelis have total more control in the future than they, they've had until now, that's not going to happen. So if you want looking for an end of it, the end of it uh, coincides with the end of the Zionist state, where there's one state for, for, for everyone with equal rights. That's it. That's, that's the only uh, peace terms that, that is going to uh, end this situation. Okay. Well, uh, one thing that is uh, definitely, mm, 
I guess, propelling and increasing the chances of Israel's economy uh, taking an even larger hit is uh, a front, perhaps, that was not anticipated, Eve Zangler, uh, and that is the one with Yemen, of which we have seen what they have done when it comes to the uh, maritime transit in the Red Sea, where at this point any Israeli-linked vessel, I'm sure you're well aware of it, is being targeted. Uh, we just had in our news what was confirmed, uh, 80 to 85 percent of the port of Elat uh, has ceased uh, to function in terms of uh, the little amount that they did. At the same time, uh, some are reporting that there's really no chance of any uh, type of vessel going there. Uh, and there are other countries that are uh, suffering as a result of this. And uh, the militarization of this Red Sea area by the U.S. and its so-called coalition is adding more worry economically. Do you think that this uh, angle or mm, part of this uh, U.S. genocidal, U.S. Israeli genocidal war uh, may lead to the end of the war where Israel needs to put up the white flag? Oh, I, there's no doubt that this puts pressure on Israel. They're, they're, that the Houthis definitely, uh, they have, they have uh, ramped up the pressure. Uh, obviously, there's also some pressure uh, with regards to uh, Hezbollah. Um, but yes, I, I think that is the case. I think that's this, it's, it's clearly uh, scared a lot of uh, the global uh, capitalist uh, world. Uh, there's major um, shipping companies that have said they don't they won't be taking uh, uh, Israeli uh, products. Uh, there's others that have decided to take different routes, uh, which cost a lot more. Uh, um, the U.S. is clearly very scared. My government, the Canadian government, has has formally joined this coalition. That's basically uh, countries that are not from the region. Uh, militarily intervening. I guess they have Bahrain as a little bit of cover, um, but uh, but this is this is definitely um, one of the things the U.S. was trying to avoid uh, when it when it you know greenlit the uh, the just you know genocidal policies in Gaza back uh, in you know mid October. Uh, that's why the U.S. was sending more uh, naval vessels. Was trying to uh, pressure any other forces in the region to not. Um, to not, uh, you know, uh, defend uh, defend Palestinians. Um, where this all could go, obviously, this has the possibility of, of escalating, um, you know, even further and drawing in other 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 countries and and uh, and uh, a wider war. Um, but uh, you know, this is it's it's the, the demand that the General Assembly made uh, the vast majority of the General Assembly for a ceasefire. I mean, that's the way to go. Uh, to you know, Israel has to stop its killing, and uh, and then uh, that will lead to uh, you know, less problems with regards to shipping. Um, but of course, the U.S. is going to do everything it can to uh, make sure that there's uh, you know not there isn't that type of pressure on Israel, both uh, both uh, economically within Israel and kind of more broadly uh, that flows from the uh, disruption of, uh, of shipping. So um, when we talk about other fronts, there's one that has been uh, escalating, albeit at a controlled manner, but it's still increasing in its uh, uh, intensity, and that is the one with Lebanon. What is going on there, do you think? What will happen, Paula Rudy? We know, um, well, here again, we're looking at two different scenarios that's put out there. Uh, one. Uh, Israel saying, uh, no, we don't want this to uh, expand with uh, uh, Hezbollah. Uh, but then you have uh, other officials saying, no, we need to go after Hezbollah. We need to purge that area out. The U.S. Th says it does not want to uh, also have this to elevate into that phase. What is the deal there? What do you think uh, th they want from that? Well, Hezbollah has also said that they um, don't want to escalate it in any further, but both sides are saying that they're willing to escalate it. I think uh, escalation would be a bigger problem for, for Israel than it would be for Hezbollah. Hezbollah will face some prob internal problems uh, in Lebanon as a result of escalation. Uh, but they can do it, and uh, with the proper provocation from Israel, which um, Israel seems willing to give them, uh, then they can justify it to the to the rest of Lebanon. Uh, 
So uh, nobody really knows. The Israelis don't know. The the uh, uh, Lebanese don't know uh, where where this is leading. But it could definitely lead to an expansion. And we don't know how big an expansion, even beyond the borders of uh, Lebanon and Israel. And uh, my final question goes to you um, here, Yves Zangler. We're taking a look at the uh, way that Israel's standing has uh, pretty much been decimated, uh, not to mention the U.S. Uh, that has, uh, Israel has brought the U.S. down with it in this uh, genocidal war. Uh, has Israel lost legitimacy on the world stage when it comes to the way that countries are going to be dealing with Israel, whether it's through trade or through diplomatic means? Certainly in terms of popular opinion, um, popular opinion around the world, it's pretty clear is, is very hostile to what, what Israel is doing. Uh, even in a country like Canada, that's the case. Um, but uh, whether it leads to long-term ramifications on trade and stuff like that, um, you know, the U.S. is still very powerful. NATO is still very powerful. They back Israel. Uh, it's going to, this has clearly been very damaging for uh, U.S. Uh, standing within the Middle East. And, uh, and I think more generally, I mean, you, you, the statements coming from the South African leader about this being a genocide. Uh, so probably in large swaths of Africa as well, uh, to a certain extent in Latin America. Uh, but whether this leads to, uh, you know, long-term effects on um, trade and things like that, I think that comes back to, you know, whether there are um, the, the forces that, you know, care about human beings and oppose genocide uh, in, the Euro in Europe, in the Middle East, in North America, whether those forces keep mobilizing and keep uh, uh, denouncing uh, what Israel's done. Uh, you know, even months after the the worst of the killing ends. Um, so you know, you, Israel's powerful country. Let's not let's be clear about that. It is a powerful country. It, it has its own internal uh, divisions, and, and I think when all is said and done, those divisions uh, in the you know the current phase of killing, I think those divisions are going to be worse. They're going to be further exacerbated within within Israel. Um, but uh, how that plays out in the uh, kind of medium term. Um, I don't know. It's clear that that Israel has lost um, here in North America in the belly of the beast. Israel has lost uh, the younger generation. That's absolutely clear. Public opinion has turned overwhelmingly. And, you know, public opinion in the Middle East was always hostile to Israel. And it's just become much more hostile. It's going to be harder for the different governments to normalize. Uh, but, how, you know, the longer term ramifications, I, I don't know at this point. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you, Yves Zangler, author and political activist from Montreal. Paul Arudi, a pleasure, co-founder of Free Palestine Movement from Berkeley. With that, we come to an end for this edition of The Spotlight. From Mikhail Tafway and the team, it's goodbye.